haven't already convinced you not to date or marry a man with children. Maybe this will work. Now, one of my mutuals talks about this a lot, so I'm going to tag her, uh, Candace Kelly. It's been really enlightening watching all her videos around this because I just didn't realize how terribly <laughs> stepmoms get treated in general. Not only by the husbands that they marry, but especially by those children, no matter how well they treat those children. And also what I've learned from watching the, the lived experiences of some of my friends. Either A, those children will hate you and you will never be respected by them, but you will lose so much money and time and effort and energy pouring into something, not something, but into children that just will not ever treat you like a, like a mother, even if you are mothering them, right? Now, there are exceptions. I know exceptions to this, okay? I'm just saying, please consider this. The other thing is that most of these men literally just want to date or marry a woman, A, because they can't be alone, they don't know how to be alone, but B, and most importantly, they want to offload all that labor onto someone else because they do not want to parent those kids, period. That's probably why they got divorced to begin with, to be honest. I'm going to show you two examples of this. Is what better than actual lived experiences of women to make my point? Now, one last thing. If you are a woman who wants to be ultra independent, have your own life, and just kind of have a part-time relationship, uh, then this might work for you. It might actually be an amazing option, right? He's got his kids. It, he, that means he's a hands-on dad. That means he's, he, he, those kids are going to come first. They are. But if you don't want children and you don't want to parent them and you only want to like, and you still want your independence in your own place, in your own life, then actually a man with children might be the perfect option for you. Only if this man is never going to assume that you are going to be involved in taking care of and, and, and giving money to and love and, and your labor, which is priceless. Your labor, right? When I was dating, I remember thinking, I don't want kids. Ain't no way I'm raising kids. Don't want kids. I don't want to be a stepmom either. So, but I'm fiercely independent. And at that point in time, I didn't think I could ever actually date a man, uh, much less marry a man, because I did not want to lose my independence. I've been alone. Like I've been single most of my adult life, right? All my 20s, 30s, right? Like, I, that's all I know. So I kind of assumed if I ever, like, linked up with someone for a, the long term, you would probably have to be a divorced dad. Because at my age, most men of our had already been married once and I had kids. And I always wanted to have my own life and do my own stuff. And I didn't want to share it with anybody. Uh, I mean, I've since met someone that I actually really enjoy sharing my life with. But I didn't think any man was worth that. I didn't think they existed. I was totally fine with the Golden Girl ending. That, that was, I was happy with that, actually. So, having said all that, this is why, unless you want what I did, which is like part-time partner, <laughs> um, do not marry men or date men with children, especially not young children. Because those men are looking for one thing and one thing only, free labor or your literal money. They're gold diggers, baby. They're all a bunch of gold diggers. Until proven otherwise. Don't trust the word they say. I'm honestly not sure which one of these stories is worse, so I'm just going to jump in with this. This Dear Annie column that comes up on my <laughs> Facebook feed all the time. I don't know why. I never subscribe. Dear Annie, my boyfriend's kids hate me so much, I wait in the car when they visit. My boyfriend's kids hate me genuinely for no reason. Oh, there's a reason. There's a reason. There's always a reason. It's probably him or um, his ex-wife perhaps might be taking her anger out on him being such a deadbeat terrible dad or whatever or cheater or whatever it is he did <laughs> i'm not saying maybe it was her fault but um women scorned by men oftentimes even if they never say a word kids can pick up by their tone they can sense that mom hates that lady even if she never says a, says a word kids are so smart I always knew my mom, my mom never said anything, but we knew by her tone alone. So much to her credit, she never said anything. 
And she was so hurt, rightfully so. Never said anything. But kids are smart, man. So he sees his kids twice a week for dinner. A dinner which I cook. Ah, you're doing too much already. But then I have to leave the house while the kids are visiting with him. Okay, I hate this man already. I know why he's divorced. Yeah, this is ridiculous. He won't even cook for his own children. Why are you cooking for him? Okay, if if you learn nothing else from my page, it is that women are doing too much. We're always doing too much. Always assume that you are doing too much until proven otherwise by a, a friend who has decentered men at a next level. Even when we resign to do nothing at all, we're still usually doing too much. It's been five years. What? Five years. Okay. Five years of the kids ignoring me and kicking me out of the house when they come to visit. When this happens, I usually have to wait out in the car. It's ridiculous. What can I do? Before Annie chimes in here, it is not the kids kicking you out of the house. It is your lazy boyfriend of five years. He's never going to marry you, by the way, unless he can't find anyone better. This man, like, oh my God. I got to go backwards. Whose house is this? I would be willing to bet that this is her house. I, it, I, th th this says the house. That's probably her house. Maybe they're sharing it, but this is at least part of her house. If it's not her house, that he is, he's a hobo, schedule, divorced, single dad who's crashing at her place, probably rent free, got her cooking their dinner. She's probably buying all the groceries. She's probably cleaning the house. She's probably literally doing everything and kissing these kids' butts or trying to, but they hate her. So she's not even allowed in her own house. This is like the most disrespectful thing ever. It has nothing to do with the kids. I would be willing to bet it has nothing to do with the ex-wife. This is him. If the kids hate her, that's on him. What is he doing? What is he saying? What is he not saying? Men will do anything to avoid conflict. They will do anything to avoid a hard conversation that could have cleared all this up. They could go to therapy. There's so many things they could do. And this man's just like, no, go sit in the car. I hope you don't. I'm pretty sure this is in Michigan. Uh, well, aren't you cold? I hate this man already. He's a selfish prick. She needs to leave. Him. Okay, Annie, what do you have to say? Annie's on the same page. Dear excluded, I am shocked that your boyfriend allowed this sort of behavior from his children at all. But even more so that he's let it continue for so many years. But... Annie, what are you doing? Don't blame the kids. It could be the kids. But these kids do not hate her for no reason. I don't care. I'm telling you, there's gonna, there is very conflicting feelings with a kid. How old are these kids? That's what I want to know. That says a lot. I'm pretty sure even if my dad and, and mom had had the most amicable divorce, which they did not at all, I probably still would have had very conflicting feelings about my stepmom unless somebody sat me down and talked to me regularly about it and I had somewhere to try to make sense of all of this, right? It is natural for the kids to feel like a weird sense of like, I don't know. I, I, I have so many friends who are stepmoms and they're just like, yeah, the girls are feeling weird. They're in this loyalty phase where they feel bad that they like me so much and they care about me. And I understand this is very hard for children. But this, this, somebody is in their ear or somebody is ignoring a big problem and it's dad. Dad, you suck. Something bigger is going on here without a dad. You may not have done anything directly, but it makes no sense for them to d dislike you for no reason. Okay, Annie. Annie. I'm sorry, but if she's going out and sitting in the car, why are you assuming that she did that? Ugh. Okay, here's the thing. Much like in-laws, I know it's different, but if my in-laws had a problem with me, my husband would absolutely be the first line of defense. He deals with it. Doesn't make me go to bat. Doesn't make me fix it. He fixes it. He deals with it. Right? The same reason if, if my family has an issue with him, I am the point person. I'm the person who needs to deal with that issue first. Doesn't mean that other person's not involved, but I am the point person. So why are you saying, like, you're just, I'm not saying that evil stepmothers exist. Absolutely. But so much hate that stepmothers get is because they're, the husbands are cowards. 
stepkids don't just hate the stepmom for no reason. I'm sorry. I want to know what dad is doing to repair that relationship. But that's the thing. Men will avoid conflict at all costs. They will do anything to avoid getting in trouble because they make every woman in their life into their mother unless they do the really hard work of deconstructing patriarchy. And even then, it's still their default and they have to catch themselves doing it. So to avoid getting in trouble with mommy or wifey or whatever, they lie, they avoid, they go play video games, they drink, they'll do anything but just face it. God, you will never convince me unless the stepmom is like an evil stepmom or a very codependent, uh, narcissistic or insecure or like really, really unhealthy and has like not worked on her stuff at all. You will never convince me because of patriarchy and hello, Cinderella. Hello, every Disney movie that I was set up to literally set up to supposed to, I'm supposed to hate a stepmom, right? Like, out of the gate, stepmoms are screwed, right? So if you have a good relationship with your stepmom, bravo! You must have worked hard for that. Because society hates stepmoms. And yet exploits them and their money and their labor and their energy and their time just as much as mothers sometimes. I know one of my friends, it, uh, it has a very close relationship with her stepdaughter. And has poured so much into this child for 16 years already. And like, I, like so much. And the thing that drives her crazy is that if at any point in time her and her husband parted ways, she had, during, especially while the child was at home, right? Raising this guy, she had no legal rights to that child. She could literally, if she may never see that child again on a dime, just like that. It's, it's, it's rough. So if you're going to invest all this into a stepchild, just, just know that this man could screw you at any moment. Or his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or baby mama could screw you at any moment by proxy. And you have usually no legal recourse. So just think about this before you get into this. Okay, Annie comes around here. She says, Open up the lines of communication with your boyfriend. He needs to know what kind of toll this treatment is taking on you. Hopefully you can provide some clarity on how his, how his kids feel and better yet, ways to put up with you, you put you all on a path to more amicable relationships. Blah, blah, blah. Annie, Annie, you're being way too easy on this man. Five years, they're living together, girlfriend, no legal rights. Can't even stay in her own home to eat the dinner she cooked. This man sucks. This man sucks. I want to know what else he's doing. Go! Oh, can you imagine cooking, really working so hard for dinner and then having to hide in the car? And I'm pretty sure that's in Michigan. It's somewhere in the Midwest, if I recall. Oh, while, while all of them are having this lovely dinner inside that you, like, at the very least, he should be cooking those, those meals. Okay, so this is the second one. This one's for Slate. Boyfriend wants me to completely float his kids, but they can't know we're together. <laughs> Cowards, these men. They won't even like your dirty little secret. Any man that you are a dirty little secret to, I don't care if it's to his kids, to his family, to anytime you are a secret on social media. It's one thing if he literally posts nothing ever. If this man is on social media and you're a secret, that man's embarrassed by you. You're going to get a shut up ring at best, to, to quote Cecilia Regina, one of my mutual. But you're most likely going to be used, exploited, you're a placeholder, da 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 da. That ain't love, baby. A man who loves you wants to, is proud to be seen with you, not hiding you. And, and he's hiding behind the kids. I don't want to upset the kid. No, I already know how this is going to go. I haven't read this in a while and I forget, so let's go into it. Ah, <sighs> Dear Pay Dirt, I think that's the name of the column. My boyfriend and I are at an impasse. I own my own place. Oh, here we go. You're screwed. I own my own place. And he was trying to get back on his feet after the divorce. Poor, poor baby. Stop dating men you feel sorry for. They exploit our empathy. They exploit our caretaking. Never date someone that you feel bad for. You are going to get screwed. He has two small kids. Oh, God, they're small. That's even worse. You're so screwed place is small and not child friendly. Good for you. 
He pays no rent. Shocker. Hobo schedule. A hobo schedule dad. That's the worst kind. God. And he pays half of the other bills, but thinks it's so completely okay for me to give up my home office for a bedroom for his kids. And pay for all the new furniture? Oh, fuck you! And help with other expenses like private tutoring and sports? Uh, no. No. I hate this man. I hate this man already. I hate him. Dump him. That's it. That's, that's my advice. Period. No hope. This entitlement. I swear, when I was dating, when I smell entitlement, you're gone. Entitlement is like the foundation of all the problems in relationships with men. If you date men, they are never going to see you as an equal. And if you're a woman or femme presenting or trans, I, I have, from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but for instance, my gay male friends don't come up with a lot of, don't face some of the, the, the gross disrespect uh, with each other, the assumption of who's going to do things, not as much as women dating men. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm, I, but I'm only saying this, for example, I could do a whole video on this. When I was on Tinder in, in, in Paris with, with my, I was a bunch of gay guys, a friend of mine and all his friends, they were like, why are you on your phone? And I was like, I'm trying to hook up. Trying to hook up, but I got to vet all these dudes. I got to make sure they're not going to unalive me. And I got to make sure they're going to, you know, eat my... And they're like, God, that's a lot of work. I was like, yeah, I have to spend a lot of time trying to make sure that they're going to, like, please me. Because, like, they never do. And they're like, oh, my God. I never, I can't Im imagine having to fight. Anyway, that should be a whole nother video. What I'm saying, assumption, when you date men, is that you are the surrogate mommy <laughs> if you, especially if you're a woman, if you're a fiercely independent woman, a successful woman, watch out. These men prey on people like us. I'm telling you, that hobo schedule that abu abused me and almost drove me off a cliff and great, you know, he dad, he was a dad, a dad with no driver's license, which means he had, I found out later on a criminal record, wasn't paying child support, la 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 la, like deadbeat, worthless dad, but literally talked about his daughter all the time. Oh, my daughter, showed pictures of his daughter. Literally begged, this was like the hobo, literal hobo, rode the rails for nine years, literally hung out outside of gas stations, told me this. When I found this out, I was like, oh my God, I hate you so much already. And this is like, that was like my final, like I cannot believe a person likes this exists. Hang out outside of a gas station with a sign that says, heading to California to see my daughter. And with, you know, a hat or something for people to throw change in. And he made a fortune. Because everybody wants the man to go see his, his daughter. If it was a son, it'd be different. But daddy, oh, the poor little girl needs a daddy. That man wasn't going to California ever. God, these hobo dads are like my... I don't like these hobo schedules, but the hobo schedule dads, God, I like you the least. The thing is, I can only turn, oh my God. I can only introduce myself as dad's friend. Oh my God. And we need to sleep separately when and if the kids come over. We aren't even talking about marriage. Oh, that he's never going to marry you, honey. And if he does, it's just for your money. Actually, you should never marry this man. This is a situation where marriage would screw her. I, Y'all know, I would say marriage is a scam, but it's also a per form of protection for women because this woman has no financial resource, recourse. So, uh, oh my God, you're getting so screwed here. And if she got married, unless she had an ironclad prenup that outlined everything, this man's going to take all her money. Too. He's going to take this house or whatever this is, flat. He's doing you a favor by not talking about marriage, seriously. But like, he's exploiting all of you. You will get none of this back. I, honestly, I think that he should give up the overnight visits and stick to seeing his kids in public places. Even just picking them up and dropping them off every day seems more doable than this. However, he is great and devoted dad. No, he's not. How is he great and devoted? Because he doesn't hate them and slap them across the face? God, bad dads make mediocre non-abusive dads look like good dads the same way abusive men like men who don't just punch us in the face look like good guys same for dads. 
I swear to God, y'all, I really thought because I had a pretty absent dad that a man who spends time with his daughter at all and doesn't watch TV the whole time and drink the whole time was a really good dad. <laughs> like I thought that a man who's not abusive, I thought a man who just didn't leave his kids for another woman was a good dad. Boy, have I changed my tune. But do you see what I mean? You know how I say all the time that the violence of men and the, the, the grape and violence and physical abuse and mental torture and all those things that all these men do make men who are just like mediocre and lazy, like deadbeat, but like are around look like good dads. That man is not a good dad. A good dad would have a place for his child, for his children. A good dad wouldn't have all these secrets and hide you. Like what? Like, I don't even, I don't care how small these kids are. They are probably like, who is this friend? Why, why is there a friend that, uh, you don't think they're picking up on the schmegual tension? God, people really think kids are dumb. I swear to God. I bet you children know when parents are headed for divorce long before those parents do. Kids, kids know, they know. Whatever you think you're hiding from your kids, you ain't hiding from your kids. Unless you have Oscar level acting skills. Nope. Okay, now look at this delusional crap. He's a great little dad. When his eyes are on me, I feel like the most special woman in the world. He's had a hard time of it. <sighs> He's had such a hard life. Honey, I want to, what did he tell you about his divorce? <laughs> what did he tell you? Did he tell you she was crazy? Probably. My guess is this man cheated or did some BS or whatever. Clearly didn't want to work. I know there's a housing crisis. I know all these things. He may live in a place that, that's not great, but he's living with you. He doesn't even have a home for these kids. Doesn't even have a bedroom for these kids. And wants to turn your office which is how you do your work and pay the bills. Turn that into their bed. Where are you supposed to work now? Who's going to pay for, are you going to, is he going to give you money to go to Starbucks? Don't go to Starbucks. Boycott Starbucks. Wherever you go to get coffee to work, is he going to pay for that? Like, God. Am I wearing rose-colored glasses? They're not rose-colored glasses. They're like childhood trauma, daddy issues, uh, delusional glasses. Rose-colored glasses would be like, a nice guy but you know he maybe watches a little like okay what okay right out of the gate we're working strong here you don't know your boyfriend and his kids anything agreed you did not agree to support them it is your boyfriend's responsibility to figure out how to make physical room for his children and to pay for their expenses not yours it's understandable that you want to help him to get back on his feet since you care about him but part of being a great and devoted dad is taking care of your own kids financially and otherwise. Right now, he is trying to outsource an important part of that while offering you no real relationship with the children or a guarantee of commitment. Exactly. It sounds like she wants marriage since she mentioned that he hasn't even talked about it yet. Like no one says that kind of stuff unless they want that. Right? So no commitment, no, no, no even hope of future commitment. And he's literally, this man is a leech, 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 parasite, literally outsourcing everything, work, finances, literally living, he's squatting. He's squatting. And then the friend, like, oh my God, these men, the audacity, the audacity. I think you just have to say no. Okay. It should have just stopped there. Actually, if this was me, I'd be like, dump him. Period. But, you know, I know we have to explain ourselves. It's also understandable that he wants overnight visits with his kids. But that doesn't obligate you to host. Your place is not his place. And he should, he should be not asking you to modify it when he's not even paying rent. That's the part that kills me. The man's not even paying rent. How dare him? He needs to figure out how and where to see his kids and how to pay for private tutoring and sports and other things himself. And it's bizarre and inappropriate that he's asking you to help support his children when you are not their mother and have no real relationship with them. He needs to figure out how he is going to make it work and his plan cannot be financially supporting, you financially supporting his kids. I liked this comment right here. 
Uh, this was on Facebook. If a guy feels like his kids aren't emotionally ready to see him with someone new without being harmful to them, maybe he should man up and stay single a while and give them time to heal. <gasps> Boom! Oh my God, there I go again. And I say like army, like military, like destructive stuff. Oh, like Anthony pointed this out. It's like, God, Americans use such violent language. And I'm like, no, the violence is in me. Get it out, get it out person was like this dude's like still recovering this guy needs to learn how to stand on his own two feet and casually date to figure that all again no don't casually date don't date at all bro focus on being a parent and the trauma your kids are going through from being divorced uh, their parents being divorced this is such a such a traumatizing thing for children all of a sudden you have two parents and now you don't and now you got to go back and forth and carry a little backpack and figure out and they hate each other now and then there's this friend you're staying at this friend's house it's weird. And you know what? I bet their mother is pissed about this. Like, the mother should know where these kids are staying. Like, this is so weird. But, huh. He's not ready for serious relationship. He's probably a good person. No. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like it at all. He sounds like a selfish prick. There's no good or bad. But this man is exploiting her. What, what part of the story makes him sound like a good person? Come on. But you need to find someone who's already recovered from his life. Like, maybe just don't date divorced men or men who are recovering from a breakup at all. This is the reason why you don't get in, in, in a relationship with it. someone who hasn't been divorced at least a year. I would, uh, the divorced women I know, so it say at least two years. But you know what's really funny? Is that when women dare to date as, as single moms, they get judged so hard. Men are just expected to just move right on. And here's the thing. Men who are widows or single dads, divorced single dads, every time, the single moms do not get this level of support without asking for it or, or really working on community, right? They join single club, because a lot of times women lose all their friends, because a lot of times, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a couple and you have you're a couple friends and their marriages are like not all that healthy either, when one couple gets divorced based on what my divorced friends have told me a lot of times they lose all their friends because it's contagious these other couples are like oh god oh i want to hang out with them i don't know because that's how scared they are of their own divorce right they distance themselves from it and so a lot of women lose all their friends and have to start all over again and find single women friends or single friends or whatever and they do usually because women are much better at this but here's the thing i challenge you we are, it is our, our conditioning is to save all these men when they get a divorce, when, if they're widows, whatever, help all these, help, help the men. They need our help. Who's helping the women? You know, those women are doing way more to raise those kids. Those single moms could use your help. So every time you really want to help someone, help the women. Cause I promise you women are doing way more almost all the time than any of the men in their lives, okay? Stop cooking casserole for the, these, make these men stand up. Men are never gonna do anything as long as we swoop in and save the day. Take the cape off, go help women because they will actually pour back into you. And again, I know I'm making gross generalizations. Every time I make a video, like, well, women are blah, blah, blah. Women can suck too sometimes. I know this. <laughs> I'm literally talking about this in this video, right? Which is why don't be friends with women who center men because if you get divorced, those are the women who are going to leave you. They're going to leave your butt. Seek out women who are going to pour into you as much as you pour into them, right? And when those women are single and, and, and single moms or whatever, help them. Stop swooping in and saving these men. Because you feel bad for the men exploit our empathy and our need to save them. And all this way we've been conditioned to be moms to them. They know what they're doing, y'all. Stop helping men. Especially divorced ones and old ones.